So I had to come outside to film this. Jill's in there doing a uh, live sale in there tonight. She, uh, I'll just bear with me on this and because the video is going to get really good here in just a little bit. And it's about this loader. But anyhow, so Jill, Jill wanted to see if she could put Emma through college by reselling antiques. And so far, she has done that. And she wanted to hammer something out on her own and do it. And I'm, I'm proud of her. She is, uh, she has rolled on that stuff. And so I'll, I'll ask her one day if she wants me to tell where she, where she does it at and things like that. But they're in there doing a live right now. But anyhow, so last year, September of 2021, the logging show, this loader that y'all are seeing right now, was at that show <clears throat> and of course most of all the equipment that's at these shows whether it's a logging show or whatever the majority of it's usually already sold when it uh when they got it to show sometimes they'll have signs on it and and uh be sitting there on display and it may say sold to somebody and whatever well, this machine was sold, and I forget who it was sold to. It was sold to a, a company down in uh, South Mississippi, and that was on the, the logging show was on a Friday and a Saturday. And so when the show was over with, they delivered the machine to its new owners down there. And shortly right after they delivered it, I mean, the machine was brand new. It may have been the first day. I don't know. I'm sure somebody that watches this video, there's going to be several people who know all the details on it. I don't know all the details on it. But right after it got delivered, like I said, it may have been the first day or second day or first week. I'm not sure. Uh, that machine ended up flipped over into a holding pond on a, on a wood yard. Like I said, I don't know the details. Uh, nobody got hurt in, uh, when it happened. I do know that. But it could have been really bad, the situation that played out. As a machine, as you've seen, was completely underwater except for a little bit of the boom and one track sticking up. <clears throat> Again, what happened, I have no idea. I'm sure somebody will pipe up in the in the comments. If somebody wants to stay anonymous on it and not say it in the comments, feel free to email me and detail everything that went on. And then I can put it in a pinned comment from myself and that way it'll stay up at the top. So you know, again, you know, all you can all I can do is speculate and I I don't know and I'm not gonna speculate. But I will say this, this can be a a good safety thing and I've held this video for a long time to where um I could use it when I had a lot of momentum going like I've got right now on my channel. Everything is rolling like crazy. I don't know if it was somebody new on the machine or what you know, what what transpired out. But here's the thing, anytime you, if you're in construction or logging or, or whatever it might be, tree work, tree work's one thing I, that I see all the time, accidents on, where people have went through chippers. There was one last week that went through a chipper. Guy went through it and he killed him. When you, no matter if you're the largest company, which the larger companies, they, they have to do things uh, in, or they're not going to be able to be in business. But... If you're a smaller operator or something like that, uh, make sure that when you're going to put somebody in a situation or on a machine, make sure that they've got experience. If they don't have experience, make sure that you work with them to get them some little bit of experience, a little bit of training. You cannot put a price on training. Not saying that's what happened here, but I mean, something like that could easily happen here. You know, I've run one of them loaders identical to that machine for, uh, I think it had, I think that machine I was on had about 22,000 hours on it when I got off of it. And, you know, you're sitting way high up in the air, a lot going on, and you can go past the point of no return very easily on a machine, whether it's that loader or a tractor or a combine or 
or whatever it might be, just make sure that whoever you've got there, they know what they do. And, and like I said a while ago, I was talking about the tree industry, what I do now, you know, there's no way I would put somebody feeding my chipper until I talked to them a little bit and I showed them some stuff. I showed them some do's and don'ts on it. You know, things that, how to feed it in there if you're gonna hand feed it and to stay out of the way, things to watch for. I wouldn't just tell somebody, hey, go grab that limb and feed it into the feed rollers right there. Cause you can, uh, you can mess around and you can uh, get in trouble. Back when I was a kid, I was uh, probably only about, I don't know, I couldn't have been more than about eight or nine years old. And my dad loved him to death, but my dad's not a teacher. He's, and some people can teach and some people can't. And that's not, I'm not saying that's good or bad, but we had a four, we had a, a pretty good sized farm and had a bunch of cows on it. One of the tractors we had was a Ford 5000, and uh, it didn't have no power steering on the tractor. And if you ever run one of those, you know, a three, four, 5,000 or 8,000 series tractor and, or any tractor with no power steering, you, you know what it takes to drive that thing. Well, uh, dad wanted me to drive that tractor and uh, and not really any instruction whatsoever. I knew there was a hill I was going to have to pull, and I didn't know what to do if the tractor pulled down on the hill, how to down shift. Of course, those tractors didn't have synchronized transmissions on them either. Just no instructions. Uh, get on the tractor, son, and go. Just put it in this gear and go. Okay. I put it in that gear, and I could barely reach the clutch. It didn't have no foot throttle those tractors were without foot throttles the tractor had a hand throttle on it and i throttled up some eased out on the clutch when i did the tractor took off the tractor didn't even have no fenders on it either by the way they were gone so i mean you sitting right there you just on a seat and that's it and i wheeled around there on that tractor because he had it the tractor had i think eight years on it and he wanted me to put it in sixth or seventh gear or something. So when I came off the clutch, the tractor lunged and took off, you know, and because I had to throttle because he told me, you know, throttle up a little bit. And so, man, when I, when I turned, when I come around on it at the speed that I was when I came off the clutch, I could not get back to the clutch and I couldn't, it, it moved so fast that I couldn't, I couldn't steer it. I mean, I'd, I fought it as hard as I could, and I went straight through a five-strand barbed wire fence right there because we were right there at the barn, and we're just gonna come out and make a make a loop. And when I, made, I just I, I couldn't I couldn't do anything, you know. And I got I went when I hit the fence, I got it stopped, and got the clutch in on. Of course, I basically had to come out off the seat to mash the clutch in. I mean, at that time, that was something that was way over my head. I, I shouldn't have never been put in that situation like that. But also, it goes back to lack of training, explaining things. Don't don't just put somebody in a situation and say, "Do it." You know, it's it's not probably not gonna not gonna work out uh, too well. So this deal with that loader being brand new. There's no telling what that thing cost it brand new. I know ours back in 08 was like, gosh, it was, I forget what that thing was. It was it was around 250,000. They're way over 300 now, I'm sure. And so that was a, uh, I'm sure that was an extremely costly claim, extremely costly boo-boo on that deal. I know they did get it out of that pond, got it out of there, but I mean, you know, whoever was in it when it went over you know, had they not got out of it and drowned in the cab, because the cab was completely submerged, you know, then you'd had a fatality on your hands. And uh, just serious stuff. Uh, so let me know down below your thoughts on it. And hope you enjoyed the video. Again, it's, everything's on a roll right now on my end. So I want to kind of keep that going all the way through Christmas. And all that so just kind of a little update there's some of y'all who watch slade uh follow the fanchers their youtube channel you've seen where uh 
I got a new bow from him the other day, the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, Owen's Outfitters are going to close up, so they they marked everything down. I had Slade knew it was coming, and Slade and I talked about it back um, back during the summer. And so I had Slade holding me a bow for when they marked them down, and they he called me. It says we're ready to go now, and I said all right. So I went over there, got it shot it in got it got it real comfortable i probably shot it way over a thousand times now in the past two and i hadn't hunted with it till today and so i took it out today my lone wolf stand out and also converted it over from the from the buckle straps the and over to am steel did that braided in myself did all that and i hunted this afternoon i've been gun hunting about just about every day but uh, so i bow hunted i was wanting to bow hunt and i ended up killing the day the ones who if you follow me on instagram you've seen what i posted on there but uh shot a real real nice day with the with the with that brand new bow and so i broke it in uh broke it in good this this evening and uh so anyhow y'all have a good rest of the evening we'll catch y'all later later taters